Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror film, Incantation. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Ronan practicing her welcoming greeting for her daughter, Dodo, in front of the video camera. Ronan experienced a traumatic past six years ago, which caused her mental health to decline, making her unable to raise Dodo alone. So Dogo is currently staying in a foster home managed by an honest man, Ming. Luckily, Ronan is given a chance by the court to prove that she can handle Dodo. So the Social Affairs Bureau has sent a social worker to examine Ronan's apartment to see if it's suitable for Dodo. Afterward, the social worker brings Ronan to the daycare to finally meet Dodo. Upon their arrival, Ming asks why Ronan is filming them, and she answers that it's a memento gift for Dodo to watch once she's grown up. Ronan chats with Dodo for a while, then later interviews Ming about his operating foster home. Ming answers that he wants to fulfill his paternal duties, even if it means raising parentless kids like Dodo. He also finds Dodo special compared to other kids, because she's the only one who calls him daddy. Eventually, Ronan goes home with her daughter, and they play together inside the house. However, a distressing shattering sound breaks from Dodo's bedroom during their playtime. While Ronan checks to see if the window in Dodo's room is alright, Dodo oddly stares at the ceiling. Afterward, Ronan brings Dodo to the bathroom to apply an eyedropper because a tiny blood vessel ruptured in her left eye. That night, Ronan is sharing in the video her great experience with Dodo when suddenly the lights black out. Ronan tries to bring back the electricity, but nothing works. More bizarre and unexplainable events happen, such as the open milk carton in the fridge, the on and off lights in the hallway, and the invisible entity crying in the elevator. This phenomenon sends shivers to Ronan, so she locks their door, hoping it'll stop. But it never ends because Dodo's toys are suddenly scattered even though Dodo's still asleep and then the toilet flushes when no one's using them. After Ronan witnesses all of these events, she tries to get back to her daughter, who's now missing from her bed. She looks under the bed and sees Dodo crawling away. She follows Dodo up to the balcony, where she eerily repeats her name. Then Dodo walks back to her room with her head down. She then snarls and screams loudly enough to close the door. Ronan opens the door and rushes to Dodo's side to comfort her and assurance that she's not alone. The following day, Ronan misses her work to deal with her daughter's unexpected behavior at school. The kindergarten teacher reports to Roman that Dodo bit her classmate earlier in class. Ronan apologizes to the classmate's mother about Dodo's unruly behavior. Ronan brings her daughter home early because of the incident. On the way home, Roman calls Ming to report what Dodo did at school. Then Dodo clarifies that she only bit her classmate because he was insulting her. That night, Ronan receives a call from the social worker and her colleague from work patronizing her performance as a mother and an employee. Ronan panics from the overwhelming pressure, so she prays to calm herself. While Ronan is praying, Dodo unexpectedly shouts from her room. She arrives to witness Dodo strangely ordering the invisible entity that she calls Batty to come down from the ceiling. Because Dodo can't reach the ceiling, she asks if Ronan can guide the Batty away from their house. Roman follows her wish and leads the Batty out of their apartment, but the moment she reaches the door, the Batty flies back inside in the appearance of a shadow. The following day, Ronan visits the school again because her daughter is distracted in class. The daycare principal describes how Dodo is always talking to herself and staring at the ceiling during class, which affects the other students. Ronan knows this happened last night too, so she distributes gifts to other students to stop them from bullying Dodo. Later, Ronan goes home to install a camera inside Dodo's bunny bag to monitor her. Meanwhile, the principal caught on video, a strange elongated hand reaching over Dodo during their playtime. Fast forward to Dodo's birthday, Ronan celebrates her birthday at the mall. After that, Ronan and Dodo decide to go home. However, the landlord is waiting for Roman upon their arrival to discuss the removal of Buddha statues from the roof. While Roman talks with the landlord, Dodo explores the rooftop because the baddie tells her so. Dodo jumps off the fence to retrieve a knife from the dormer. Afterward, she climbs back up and enters the room filled with Buddha statues. She shouts a weird incantation right before the door opens wide enough to reveal Dodo giggling over a video from Ronan's video camera. Ronan eventually finds Dodo on the rooftop and removes everything she's holding. Afterward, Ronan carries Dodo into the car and rushes her to the emergency room at the hospital because she's hyperventilating. The following day, Ming visits Ronan to report that Dodo has been diagnosed with hemiparesis. He comments that it's strange for Dodo to experience such sickness when she was doing well before. Afterward, Ming gives Ronan a red envelope containing Dodo's name and explains that it came from the social worker who took it from the temple. Ming believes it's a protective measure, but Ronan panics because it's a familiar item from her traumatic past. Meanwhile, the social worker unexpectedly committed suicide after retrieving the red envelope from the temple. 
Due to the series of unfortunate events around Dodo, Roman slowly falls into the depths of fear again, so she attends her therapy with her psychiatrist. However, the psychiatrist's therapy doesn't help her at all, because the misfortunes happening in their lives are the consequences of the sin that she has committed in the past. Since Dodo's health is becoming worse under Ronan's care, the court revokes Ronan's custody rights over Dodo. However, Ronan doesn't want to comply with their decision, so she impulsively breaks Dodo out of the hospital and shortly stops over at their apartment to gather their belongings. The police and social workers know that Dodo is missing, so they first search the perimeter around Ronan's apartment. During the search, Ming recognizes Ronan's parked car in the vicinity and finds Dodo hiding inside. He tries to convince Dodo to come with him, but after seeing Ronan approaching her car, he hesitates whether to report her or not. The thing is, Ming understands Ronan's reason for not returning Dodo because he knows what it's like to be separated from their child. So Ming follows his heart, allows Ronan to enter the car, and they drive away past the cops. Afterward, they travel to the place where everything begins. It's revealed that six years ago, there was a forbidden tunnel built in a remote village located in the mountains. The villagers there were devotees of the deity Mother Buddha, who was hidden in the tunnel. The lore behind the Mother Buddha and Cursed Tunnel piqued the interest of Ronan and the brothers, Yan and Dom, in debunking the whole ordeal as part of their new episode for their online channel. Luckily, Dom and Yan had their ancestors residing in the village, so they used this opportunity to visit and investigate the place, without arousing suspicion about their real intention. They arrived in the village, and the villagers greeted them with a unique hand gesture, where they conjoined their knuckles together, and their fingers were fanned out. They reached the center of the village, and Dom and Yan's granduncle welcomed them warmly, except for Ronan. Granduncle forbade Ronan from entering further, because outsiders weren't allowed to participate in their private family ritual. Fortunately, an old lady called Great Aunt by the villagers surprisingly allowed Ronan inside the village after examining her. So Grand Uncle complied with Great Aunt's decision and toured them around the place. During the tour, they saw the girl claimed as the chosen one, being tattooed with texts by a village artist. When Yen asked Grand Uncle about the nearby tunnel, he only answered that it was a restricted area for everyone. At night, Roman and the two brothers snuck a camera during a sacred prayer. They wrote their names first on a piece of paper, gave them to Grand Uncle, and prayed afterward. Great Aunt explained that since they offered their real names to Mother Buddha, their real names were considered unspeakable in the village because they now belonged to the deity and they needed to return every 10 years to worship Mother Buddha. Afterward, Great Aunt snipped a lock of hair from the Chosen One, distributed each hair on Ronan, Dom, and Yan's paper names, and sealed them each in a red envelope. Then, the Chosen One oddly approached Ronan and prayed over her stomach. Everyone was confused, until Great Aunt explained that Ronan must offer the name of the baby girl inside Ronan to Mother Buddha once she was born. The reason why Great Aunt allowed Ronan into the village was that she sensed the baby inside Ronan would please the gods. Throughout their stay in the village, Ronan felt fatigued all over her body as the pregnancy symptoms began. However, Yan still insisted on continuing filming and completely disregarded Ronan's situation for the sake of fulfilling their viewers' request. So they snuck out again and recorded the villagers cooped up in a room, repeatedly reciting the weird incantation. During the recitation, the Chosen One caught them watching, so she approached them and asked if they wanted to play. When they agreed, the Chosen One only brought Ronan inside a room filled with art and statues of Mother Buddha. She brought out a box of living frogs and asked Ronan to feed them. After feeding the frogs, Ronan noticed the girl's missing left ear. The girl then explained that the gods chose her, so Mother Buddha took her flesh to bless everyone. Suddenly, all the Buddha statues in the room quaked and stared at Ronan, implying that the baby she was carrying was chosen by the gods. The Chosen One immediately pushed Ronan to bow and recite the incantation with her. Just then, Grand Uncle barged into the room and stopped where was going on. After getting caught, Grand Uncle ordered them to leave the village at first light before locking them in their room. However, nothing seemed to stop them from achieving their goal. So the three of them escaped from the house and discreetly trekked up the sloping road on the way to the tunnel. Unfortunately, their progress was slow because Ronan was nauseous and in pain. Since Ronan's pregnancy was confirmed, Dom named their future child Dodo. While Dom comforted Ronan, Yan panicked and told them to hide quickly because the villagers were already conducting the ritual. The ritual involved offering the Chosen One and a goat at the entrance of the Forbidden Tunnel. They saw the Chosen One wrapped in a thick blanket, and Ronan and Dom wanted to take the Chosen One to a hospital. However, Yan was still persistent with the video and broke down the tunnel's door. The moment it fell, eerie disembodied wailing voices echoed from within the tunnel. Because Dom couldn't leave his brother alone, he joined Yan inside, while Ronan stayed behind with the Chosen One. 
Not long after, Ronan's stomach contracted, discharging blood out of her genitalia below. She panicked more when Yan hastily exited the tunnel, screaming in fear and dropping their video camera on the ground. Subsequently, while the villagers retrieved Dom's corpse from the tunnel, Grand Uncle scolded and slapped Ronan's face for violating their taboo. Ronan was weakened by grief and physical pain, so the Chosen One gave Ronan a drink from the waters of the frog's box. Ronan realized where the water came from and got mad at her, so she left with their video camera. Ronan reached the village and saw the naked villagers filled with body runes who chanted the incantation repeatedly. While Ronan searched for their car, she found Yun possessed by a malicious spirit that led to his death and Dom's body burning on top of the pole. Finally, after witnessing the gruesome deaths of her loved ones, she eventually found their car and escaped the village. After that incident, Dodo was born later and Ronan gave her to Ming's foster house because her mental health was unstable due to the traumatic experience in the village. She has also undergone therapy with the psychiatrist since then to help with her recovery. Ronan tried to explain to the psychiatrist that if people tried to understand the curse by watching the video of the Mother Buddha statue shown in the tunnel, they would be cursed and were likely to encounter misfortune that would lead to death. Back in the present time, Ming, Roman, and her daughter try to return to the village in the mountains. They're on the road near the village, but when they realize that they're going in circles, Ming stops the car. Suddenly, a loud hammering slams the roof. Ronan recites the incantation to cast away the noise, and Ming eventually joins her chanting. Not long after, the strikes slowly fade until they disappear completely. After the unexpected disturbance on the road, Ming and Ronan visit a shrine to talk with a priest. The priest exorcises the cursed video camera and feeds a blessed leaf to Dodo as part of the exorcism. At the end of the ordeal, the priest's wife strictly orders Ronan not to feed Dodo for seven days or it'll cost them their lives. Ronan tries to uplift Dodo's spirit, but the pain she feels becomes unbearable. Throughout the days of the week, Dodo experiences profuse sweating, atrophying legs, and marks on the body. She tries to ask for help from a doctor, but it means she needs to feed Dodo, which is against the priest's order. So Ronan administers a drip to Dodo instead, as a replacement for food. However, the drip strangely changes into a dirty liquid, making it unsafe for Dodo to use further. Ronan has no choice but to feed her daughter a sweet piece of pineapple. Meanwhile, Ming borrows the video camera to see what happened in Ronan's past and studies the lore behind Mother Buddha and the video camera's footage. On the first day, he experiences a severe headache after trying to fix the destroyed footage. He notices it always fails from restoration every time it progresses to the part where it shows the insides of the tunnel. On the second day, his tooth falls out after comparing the Bifanchan hand gesture in Tantric Buddhism, which symbolizes collect blessing, to the mountain villager's hand gesture that means to spread. Ming suffers nosebleeds on the third day after discovering that the texts and insignia may be from the Brahmic script used in recording Buddhist scriptures in ancient India. He researches further and discovers the only remaining tantric Buddhist virgin monk is in the southern province of China, who can translate ancient Buddhist scriptures. On the fourth day, Ming travels to China and finds the virgin monk's temple for translation. After the tedious journey of finding the truth, Ming finally ends his research, but he looks ill. He sends Ronan the clip of the virgin monk translating the weird incantation, but he keeps the restored video tunnel to himself. Then he apologizes to Ronan for reporting her alleged inadequacy as a parent to the Social Affairs Bureau simply because he didn't trust her in the past. Ming knows the cost of studying the video. He ends up getting possessed and slams his head repeatedly till his death. Meanwhile, Ronan receives spammed text messages from Ming containing the tunnel video. However, she gets distracted by Dodo, who's groaning from pain over the open wounds in her body. This is the consequence of breaking the agreement with the priest's warning, since she fed her with food. So Ronan forces Dodo to vomit the pineapple, and among her pute is a caterpillar eating the untouched leaf. Ronan brings her daughter back to the temple, but it's too late because the priest is dead and the wife is possessed. The possessed wife tells Dodo that she's cursed because Ronan failed to submit her name to the gods on the day Dodo received her name. The possessed wife shreds her skin off and transforms into a monster who attempts to attack Ronan, but Ronan deflects her strike on time, evading its deathly slashes. Meanwhile, Dodo disappears from the wheelchair and Ronan sees her flubbing for a second and quickly drops back down. Ronan then calls an ambulance for Dodo, where they bring her to the ER. Alone in the house, Ronan breaks the fourth wall and speaks with the viewers. She recites the weird incantation and permits the viewers who are watching her to join in the chanting and to memorize the shown insignia. Then Ronan simplifies the meaning of the weird incantation according to the virgin monk. 
It turns out, the incantation originated from religion that worshipped the malicious Dahai Mother Buddha, who spread across Southeast Asia to the Set Mountain Village. These devotees inherited bad karma from generation to generation, so they chant the incantation to receive the blessing. Therefore, the more people chant, the more blessings accumulate. These collected blessings protect anyone who chants the incantation. Later, Ronan learns from the doctor that Dodo's situation has gotten worse. That night, Dodo surprisingly evades the nurses and follows an invisible entity outside the building. The invisible entity leads Dodo to the unconscious Chosen One from six years ago, lying on the side of the road. The Chosen One's discovery is broadcast on the news, and Dodo is rushed back into the hospital. The following day, Roman dismembers the unconscious Chosen One's right ear. Then, she finally reveals the restored tunnel video. The video showed Dom and Yen inside the tunnel, revealing a massive maze. At each turn were Buddha statues, broken enchanted mirrors, mutilated body parts, and locks of hair on each altar. Then they saw Mother Buddha was covered with a cloth in the heart of the maze. Its hand formation shows the hand gesture that the villagers imitated. Unfortunately, Dom looked behind the covers, and that led to his demise. He got possessed and acted violently in the rest of the footage. Meanwhile, the tunnel echoed disembodied voices and strange arms stuck out of the walls that attacked Dom. Yan tried to save his brother, but Dom was already gone after looking at Mother Buddha's face. Dom turned to Yan, revealing his bleeding, unrecognizable face and attacked Yan. However, Yan managed to escape from the tunnel, and the rest is history. Back in the present time, while Dodo is still in the hospital, Ronan returns all of Dodo's belongings to the foster home. She finally decides to comply with the court's decision because she knows how dangerous things have become. Afterward, she returns to the village, hoping to put an end to all this. She enters the forbidden tunnel with written runes all over her body. She destroys everything inside, except Mother Buddha's statue and altar. The movie ends with Ronan offering the mutilated ear from the chosen girl and chanting the incantation in front of Mother Buddha's statue. Before offering herself, Ronan confesses to the viewers that she lied about the weird incantation's purpose. According to the Virgin Monk's explanation, the incantation originated from a local Chinese dialect, translating to misfortune and blessing depend on one another, and death and life lie in the name. It turns out, if the viewers recite their name and the incantation together, they naively accept to carry Mother Buddha's curse rather than getting its blessing. Meanwhile, the insignia is a spell for diffusing the curse on strangers, so when the viewers memorize it, it means the curse is passed on. The purpose of the incantation is to dilute the curse, so the burden caused by the curse will become lighter. Roman thinks this is the only way to make her cursed daughter live again, so she asks the viewer one last time to submit their name and recite the weird incantation with her. Afterward, Ronan offers herself to the deity and allows it to possess her. She then slams her head on the table while blindfolded. In the end, she reveals Mother Buddha's face, the root cause of the curse, implying that Mother Buddha has possessed her. Since this memento accumulated a lot of viewers, Dodo is healthy once again because the burden of her curse has been distributed to the viewers. This Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.